We look at how the fires in Hawaii, it killed at least 100 people and likely far more were made worse by the climate crisis, which has led to a rise in temperatures at the same time Hawaii is facing a drought. This was amplified by Hurricane Dora Tuesday, when it passed south of Hawaii, hundreds of miles away, as a Category 4 storm quickly spread the fire. Climate change is also linked to stronger hurricanes. Last week, the scientist Michael Mann wrote on social media, what we're seeing in Maui is a compound climate catastrophe, where an immediate factor, in this case unusually strong winds from the outer bands of a passing hurricane, interact with background state extreme drought that has been in place for a month. Michael Mann joins us now, the presidential distinguished professor and director of the Penn Center for Science, Sustainability and Media at the University of Pennsylvania. His upcoming book is Our Fragile Moment, How Lessons from Earth's Past Can Help Us Survive the Climate Crisis. Welcome back to Democracy Now!, Professor Mann. If you can start off by um, Making that link, as many say, no, this is about weather. It's nothing to do with the climate crisis. Uh, teach. Yeah, thanks, Amy. It's good to be with you, although it seems we never have good news to talk about. And uh, the stories that, you know, we, we've heard reported here uh, are just uh, so harrowing. And this is the climate crisis. It's here and now. It's impacting us today in profound ways. And, and this is what, uh, you know, just the latest example. And there is clearly a climate component to what's happened here, a climate change component. Uh, those winds that you talked about um, are governed by differences in pressure, in surface pressure. Uh, a hurricane is a low pressure system. In the subtropics, you have high pressures. And the difference between them, the gradient, as we call it, in pressure between the high and the low is what determines the strength of those winds. And so we have higher and higher pressure over time in this region of the world associated with the changing atmospheric circulation associated with climate change. High pressure to the north, we had a storm, a rapidly intensifying storm, and climate change uh, encourages rapid intensification of these storms that gave us that low pressure to the south. That difference in pressure gave us those huge winds, and it interacted with an epic drought. Um, and that drought is part of the climate story here as well. As we see more and more high pressure in the summer over this region of the planet, uh, we see less rainfall. Uh, hotter temperatures mean more evaporation of what soil moisture there is. And so we see this epic drought uh, the winds uh, did sort of provide the spark, in a sense. Uh, the downed power lines provided the spark. But what allowed these fires to spread so quickly, uh, to become so damaging, was in substantial part the huge amount of fuel there was in the form of dry materials, the tinderbox conditions uh, that are, are, you know, are, are there today. All of those things have been impacted by climate change. So we can't tell this story without talking about the climate crisis. I want to turn right now to President Biden. Last week, during an interview with the Weather Channel, meteorologist Stephanie Abrams um, asked him, he was in Arizona at the time, asked President Biden, um, uh, to talk about a climate emergency. President Biden said he'd practically declared a climate emergency. Mr. President, you call climate change a code red for humanity. The World Health Organization said it will cause an additional quarter of a million deaths a year starting in 2030. Are you prepared to declare a national emergency with respect to climate change? I've already done that. National, we've conserved more land. We've moved and we've rejoined the Paris Climate Accord. We passed the $368 billion climate control facility. We're, we're, we're moving. It's the, it is the existential threat to humanity. So you've already declared that national emergency. Practically speaking, yes. Yeah. Practically speaking, Michael Mann, could you explain what it would mean if a climate emergency were declared in this country? 
Yeah, so you know, there there was a little bit of um, of word uh, ev <laughs> evasion there, I suppose, in in uh, President Biden's response, because of course, what that means specifically, declaring a national emergency, is that you uh, can bring uh, funds uh, immediately to bear um, on the problem. It, it's something that the the chief executive can do through executive uh, authority. Now, I imagine you know uh, the president is a bit averse to declaring a national. emergency emergency because we've seen that abused. For example, Donald Trump tried to use that as a pretext for building his war at the southern border. So I think there's um, there, there, there's sort of some, uh, you know, uh, there, there is some concern about how that can be abused. Um, and, you know, the climate crisis is this continually uh, evolving and worsening crisis. So um, declaring it as an emergency sort of sounds like we're talking about an acute problem, like we can just bring a whole bunch of resources to bear, um, solve the problem, and we're done. That's not what's going on here. We, of course, uh, have to continue to uh, provide more and more resources to bring to bear. We need policies that will get us off fossil fuels as quickly as possible. Now, the president's right. The Inflation Reduction Act uh, that he signed into law last year, um, that does get us somewhere down the road, but it doesn't go far enough. We need more action. The president is somewhat limited right now by a split Congress, Republicans who will oppose everything he tries to do, and he's encountering re uh, resistance uh, with the conservative court system now. So when he tries to, for example, block pipelines um, through executive authority, uh, the uh, the court system is rejecting uh, those attempts. And so what it comes down to is us. We've got to turn out in droves. Those of us who care about the climate crisis have to turn out in droves in the next election and elect climate forward politicians because we will not see the progress that we need without uh, massive policy support, without uh, overwhelming majorities in the Senate and Congress and a president who will all work together to solve what is the defining crisis of our time, the climate crisis. Michael Mann, I hope we'll be coming back to you soon. Uh, presidential Distinguished Professor and Director of the Penn Center for Science, Sustainability and the Media at the University of Pennsylvania, author of the forthcoming book, Our Fragile Moment, How Lessons from Earth's Past Can Help Us Survive the Climate Crisis.